Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I, I thank my honorable conservative colleague uh, for his expression of concerns because I've been quite baffled having read C-71 as to why the Conservative Party is uh, alarming people who are legal gun owners, lawful citizens of Canada. I understand it better now, but when I read the legislation, it, it just doesn't add up. I see this legislation is very valuable, and I'd ask my honorable colleague if he disagrees that it isn't better to ensure that when we do checks on someone's um, history of, in terms of mental health, whether you would want such an individual to own a gun, you don't stop at the current legislation, which is only going back five years, but actually look at the lifetime of a record of an individual and deciding whether they should be able to buy a firearm or not. Surely that's something that would make a lot of conservative uh, families and communities and conservative voters feel very relieved to know that there's a lifetime check, not just the current five years. The Honourable Member for Saskatoon Grasswood. Mr. Speaker, we're all for public safety. Um, you know, 20 years is a long time. Many businesses change hands. We all know that. When you go and buy a gun from Cabela's or wherever you buy your, your gun from in this country, um, you know, we're just wondering why the gangs in this country, we know they're not going to walk into the store, register their name, do all the, the things that they have to do. And this is part of it. We want to get corrected in this country for Bill C-71. We want law-abiding citizens. They're being, I think, uh, picked on in this bill while gang members aren't. And that's all we're saying with this. Uh, you know, um, law-abiding citizens have, for years, for decades in this country, been law-abiding. They're the safest with the guns in this country, and yet this bill does little to give them any support whatsoever. We have time for uh, one more short question and response. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Saanich Gulf Islands. Thank you. I'll, I'll ask my Honourable Friend from Saskatoon uh, Grasslands again. A, a different aspect of this bill that I like and is we used to have, and I, I don't remember the exact years, but it certainly was the case for decades leading up to about 1995 that retailers selling guns had to keep track of the transactions. That, that's just common sense. It wasn't a registry of any kind. We did it for a very long time, and it disappeared with the long gun registry and the repeal of the long gun registry. It looked like a, a mistake, and it's being corrected now. And I'd ask him if he really mm -hmm. thinks, and his party really thinks, that we shouldn't keep track of the sales of guns in any way, shape, or form. Well, member for Saskatoon Grasswood. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think we should. Uh, I'm just wondering about gang members, though because we don't see any legislation here that actually targets them. And that's the biggest issue with this bill, Mr. Speaker. Law-abiding citizens have been law-abiding forever in this country. Now we have gang members that are not registering them. This does not talk about that. So we are upset about this bill. The other one that we're upset about is not talking to First Nations. I mean, the committee did not hear enough information during committee from First Nations. So we think this is important. They have a big say on this too. 